Do you know your medicine? Weed Maps and SC Laboratories bring you an educational series on the science of clean and safe cannabis. In today's episode, Indica and Sativa Classification. Okay, well, I'm Dr. Bonnie Goldstein, and I've been practicing in the specialty of medical cannabis for the past uh, three years. Uh, my name is Josh Werzer. I'm the laboratory director here at SC Labs. I've been testing cannabis now for almost three years. Uh, I'm Mike Corral. I'm the uh, co-founder and agricultural director of WAM, Women's Alliance for Medical Marijuana in Santa Cruz. Uh, Michael Backus. I founded uh, Cornerstone Research Collective down in Los Angeles. It was one of the first evidence-based collectives in California. Well, it's so great to be here with all of you guys um, who have such unbelievable experience and background in cannabis and helping patients. One of the things that I've noticed is that I have a lot of patients, or the conversation always comes up between, hey doc, you know, what kind of medicine should I get? Should I get sativa medicine? Should I get indica medicine? Or maybe I should try hybrid? Do these designations mean something for patients? or should patients be um, demanding tested medicine so they can see the levels of the cannabinoids so they're able to determine what will work for them. It's really about cannabinoid profiles. And I don't think, I don't think it really has much to do with sativa indica or the name of a strain. Nobody knows the genetic origins, how the flavonoids and how the tryptonoids sure. affect the modulation of the cannabinoids within the marijuana. And I think that's really where what the argument is about. And it's not an argument, it's just a discovery of, okay, what is there, what the effects, what affects each constituent to have the effect in the physiology of each particular patient. Through the years, the, the classification for indica sativa has changed. In some instances, it was based on the effects. In other instances, it was based on leaf, leaf size. It was based on plant structure. I, I have yet to read anywhere where it was ever based on chirping profile. And, and so the indica sativa is never really described the health effects that you're getting getting from the plant. It's kind of an artificial classification because um, botanists feel compelled to, to classify everything into, into sure. groups. A sativa may be predisposed to have a certain terpene profile or may be predisposed to have a certain cannabinoid profile, but that was never really the intended purpose is for it to explain how it's actually interacting with the body. The difference between indica and sativa for me isn't as important as the chemotype. What is the chemistry of the particular strain? Because if you tell me the chemistry of the particular strain and the cannabinoid profile, then I can tell you what the effect is going to be like. The cannabinoid profile never explained the effect to me. It never explained like what it did. Well, and I've read somewhere that some, you can have similar cannabinoid profiles for different plants and give them, give one person let them try three with almost exactly the same cannabinoid profile and they'll get three different effects. So, uh, I, and I will bet that the terpene profile varies widely. That's exactly the problem with what's happening. But also too, it's the physiology of the individual Absolutely, the individual too. variation, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, their genetic makeup, of course. Remember, a lot of this is framing for patients. A lot of this is, if, you've, if, if it's been framed as a sativa, that 30% placebo effect is gonna have a lot of juice. And, and you have to be, that's the thing about these labels. Absolutely. It's better to label by chemotype than by phenotype. And if you go just by plant morphology and how the plant looks, you can miss some things. That be way off, actually. Yeah. 